Pentecost Sunday. How many thank God for the, as I say it, the power. Power of the Holy Ghost. How many thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. It's a great day. I love this day of the year and I always love to celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit and us encountering God. Um, I do want to, before we get into the message this morning, do want to honor, you know, this is Memorial Day and, you know, freedom comes with a price. I said freedom comes with a price, amen. And I know there's many of you that served in some uh, realm of the military and uh, paid by your sweat, maybe even some your blood, for the freedom we have here in America and for those that have served and served at the point of giving their lives. We, we salute, we honor them. But if you're serving in the military or have served in the military, if you would stand on your feet. We want to honor you this morning. Can we give the Lord a clap? Come on. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Uh, one other thing, the um, Impact Girls, which is one of our, our ministries that, that is geared toward uh, uh, girls that they do on Wednesday nights, Miss Crystal Price, they're having a cake auction that will end at 1230 today. So after service, uh, there's some awesome cakes back there that you can uh, bid on. And don't get mad at nobody now if they get your cake. Amen. But you can do that and it'll go toward that ministry. And we appreciate all that takes place back there. Amen. If you will, take your Bibles. Let's kick off in Romans chapter 8 again. I'm going to continue on this series, uh, Mind Games. Mind Games. Romans chapter 8, and look at verse 6 and 7. If you will, let's stand on our feet. Amen. How many are glad y'all here this morning? All right. Is it a good day to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. All right. Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Look in verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this awesome body of believers. I thank you for men and women of God that are declaring your gospel and your kingdom throughout this region. I pray over all the churches, God, in our network, Legacy Network. Lord, all the churches, God, and uh, the different areas, Father, throughout this city and this region. Father, I pray for an awakening on this Pentecostal Sunday. God, I pray you'll stir up the hearts of your people. Father, as I stand before your people today, I ask you to give me wisdom. I ask you to give me a fresh anointing. Father, let me speak things, Father, that are straight from the throne room of heaven, that will relate and minister right where we live, that we can practically apply to our lives. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. You be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is a series we've been working on for several weeks now, and we've been dealing with mind games, and of course in these two verses right here, we talked about how, that, how you set your mind determines how you live your life. And let me realize our thought life is so vitally important. I said our thought life is so vitally important. Matter of fact, I believe the greatest battlefields are not the battlefields in Syria and Iraq. I don't believe our greatest opponents are ISIS. Although we don't negate that they are enemies and we don't negate the spirit in behind them, I should say. Not the people themselves, but the spirit in behind them. They are adversaries, they are enemies in that sense of the word. But I believe the greatest battlefield is the battlefield in between our ears. Come on somebody. And the enemy wants to play mind games. And the enemy understands how God created humanity. And he understands the thought process. And of all the different areas of our human makeup, the mind is the avenue with which the enemy sows seeds of doubt, seeds of fear, seeds of unbelief. And so our mind is really our greatest battlefield. Because as our mind goes, so goes our life. Amen? And so when we understand that there is a battlefield in our mind, and the enemy is all about sowing bad seeds 
in our thought processes because realize this, seeds always produce harvest if they're left alone. And thoughts, like words, are seeds. See, I don't believe somebody just wakes up one morning that's been married 20 years and makes a decision, I'm going to commit adultery. I don't believe it happens overnight. I believe sometime, and there's a parable in the Bible that says when the husbandman slept, that there was an enemy came in and sowed so tares among the thorns. I believe it happens because there was an initial seed that was planted, and then after that initial seed that was planted in that individual's mind, after a period of time there came another seed and another seed. And before long, there was something that developed in their mind that the Bible calls a stronghold. And out of that thought process, they yielded their life to the seeds that the enemy planted. But how many realize if we would have stopped the first seed, we wouldn't have to worry about the second or the third seed? And we would thus stop the process, but it started in the thoughts or in our mind. And in this element of the series that we've been talking about, Mind Games, I'm going to talk about winning the battle in our thought realm. Winning the battle in our thought realm. Because watch this, sometimes the enemy will set a thought in our mind and condemn us for the thought that he put in our mind. See, you and I, we aren't responsible for the thoughts that come to us, but we're very much responsible for the thoughts that we allow to stay in our minds. Can you say amen? And our minds is the place that the enemy wants to sow those seeds. And here in Romans, it says the carnal mind is enmity against God. In other words, the negative thoughts of the enemy, when they're allowed to come in our mind and become part of our thought process, will produce death in us. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And you know, I'm convinced that there are many believers that are born again, even filled with the Holy Spirit, have the power of God in their spirit, in their life, yet they're living tormented lives because they don't understand this battle going on in our mind. There's a battle going on for your mind. The Spirit of God and the Word of God is the thing that wants to dominate our thinking. But yet the enemy and the flesh are things that are contrary to the Word and the Spirit of God. So wherever we allow our thoughts to go, it will determine whether we live a carnal life or whether we live a life that is full of godliness and the right way of living. Have you realized there is a right way to live and a wrong way to live? And it's going to come out of our thought process. So our minds are this battlefield. So to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Glory to God. I remember before I was born again, when I would lay down at night, my mind would be troubled. And even times after I've been saved, if you catch yourself caught up in this thing we call worry, come on somebody. And most of the time when you deal with stuff you're worrying about, it's stuff that has not yet happened. And the majority of the time, the thing you're worried about doesn't come to pass anyway. But what the enemy has been able to do, if you get into that state of worrying in your mind, he has got your spirit messed up, he's got your spirit tormented, and you are paralyzed in a sense because you're worried about something that may not even happen. That's why the Bible says, take no thought for tomorrow, let tomorrow take thought for itself. Amen? And so we've got to analyze the thoughts that come in our mind. Are these thoughts that are coming in our mind or we're dwelling on, are they producing peace? Or are they producing life? Amen? Because really, the devil, you, know, you know how it is. You can get one little ache in your elbow and if you Google it, you done had cancer and going to die in three days. Y'all come on. Let me know what I'm talking about. And the enemy, if he can sow a seed... I'm convinced there are times, not always the case, sometimes it's just physical attack that comes straight from the enemy, but I think sometimes in our lives, through our thought process, we can open up doors to give the enemy access to arenas of our lives. Through our thoughts. Because thoughts that are allowed to stay eventually become words. And the book of Proverbs says that our words are life or death is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Before a word comes out, there first comes a thought. Can you say amen? amen? 
So our thoughts are vitally important. And here in verse 7, it says to be carnally minded is enmity against God. It's against God. It, it is not subject to the law of God. In other words, there's either the law of God that we allow to govern and dominate our thoughts or the flesh or carnality. When we allow the Word of God to dictate our thoughts and help analyze our thoughts where we should receive them or cast them down, when we allow the Word of God to do that, you know what it's going to do? It's going to produce peace and it's going to produce life. Amen? There are people that are believers that are tormented. We talked last week about fear. Anybody get delivered from fear last week? In Jesus' name, I believe there were some. Amen? Fear is a powerful thing, but it comes in our mind. Here's another scripture I want you to look at. And this is the gist of what we're going to get into today. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. This is a powerful verse. If you de deal with worry, if you deal with negative thoughts, it, it, because understand this, thoughts become habitual. Ways of thinking become habitual. Come on, all of us know somebody, maybe some here, that all your thoughts that flood your mind are usually negative. Something's going to happen to my baby. Oh, I know something's going to happen to little Johnny. And every moment, something's going to happen to little Johnny. And, and, you know, and, you, and you get these veins of negative thoughts, and they become habitual. I'm going to get a disease. I'm going to die of cancer. I bind the devil. If that thought comes my way, that's what I say. I bind the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. But, you know, the enemy will try to bring these thoughts. And if you meditate them long enough, you know what? There was, this is a great illustration right here. There was a friend of mine. He told me, he said, you know, we were working one day. And we were going to play this joke on this individual. And this is what we did. He said, we told him, said, we, we had this plan. There was two or three of them. And they said, each time we saw him on the job, we were going to make like we, he looked sick. And so that morning they saw him, you know, a little bit later after they made the decision they were going to trick this guy. And they said, you feeling all right, John? You, you look a little sick, John. You feel, no, nah, I feel okay. Well, you, you look a little peaky. You sure you're all right? John says, yeah, he's all right. Well, about 30, 45 minutes later, the other guy sees him and he said, John, are you okay? You look like you look like you're sick, John. You sure you feel? No, I'm fine. Guess what? At lunchtime, he had to go home sick. <laughs> true story. Come on, somebody. We laughing. It's a true story, though, because his meditation and what he meditated on and what he believed became real to him. So our belief system is so vitally important. In this information age that you and I are living in, there is so much information at our fingertips and a lot of it don't line up with the law of God or the Word of God. And if you aren't careful, you'll find yourself agreeing with philosophies and mindsets that are totally contrary to the Word of God. There are those that would say that the Word is old-fashioned. I'm going to say it like this again. This is how I deal with thoughts too. I bind the devil. The Word of God is just as relative today as it ever has been. Amen. It's just as applicable today as it ever has been. And the Word is the very thing that dictates to you and I what truth and error is. It's the Word of God. Can you say amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Watch this. For though we walk in the flesh, do we not war according to the flesh? War. Somebody say war. I mean, this is some military terminology right here. Right? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. But mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. I mean, this terminology right here is talking about major warfare. Pulling down strongholds. Usually in biblical times, strongholds were like the city of Jericho. Many scholars believe that the wall of Jericho was 30 foot wide. It was referred to as a stronghold. It was a place where the enemy had erected a wall. Watch this. Verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every... Somebody say every. every. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Wow. Bringing every thought captive. See, this is the way it is, guys. When thoughts come, it's almost like somebody knocking on the door of your mind when a thought comes. And when that takes place, y'all hear something? Wait a minute. It's, 
Oh. So what is this? Your thought? Doubt. And lust. Let's get back over here. Back up a little. Trust me now, lust. See, this is what happens, guys. Did y'all notice I just cracked the door a little bit? And he jerked the door on open. And you know what else? He brought somebody with him. See, what we think is just a little thought of doubt. Remember, Eve in the Garden of Eden, hath God not said? That's all the devil said. That's all the serpent said to Eve was, hath God not said? He questioned what God had said, right? What did Eve do? We know she fell in sin, give give the fruit to Adam, and sin came into the human race. But it started with a thought from Satan, hath God not said? It started with this thing called doubt. You know something that will keep you out of the supernatural and the miraculous? Seeds of doubt. When you get an evil report and the devil's told you or some kind of report, you're not going to make it. Listen, unless God's told you it's your time to go, you need to be standing in faith. And this is what you need to do. Now, the Bible said, now y'all see I'm a little brother and this brother a little bit bigger than I am, right? But in the Spirit, when you got Christ in you, when you got the Holy Ghost in you, okay? The Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. This is what the Word said that I just read. We're to take every thought, what? Captive. Captive. Wait a minute, doubt. What are you doing up in my mind? I take you captive. Get up out of my mind in the name of Jesus. And see, see what happened right there? I took that thought captive. We've got to believe the Word of God, y'all. The battlefield of our mind, if the devil can sow doubt in your mind, he will limit you in walking in faith. He will limit you in believing God for the supernatural. You may be here, you may be believing for your marriage. Let me tell you something. God is a God that's well able to bring restoration. He's a God that can heal. You may be believing God for a healing in your physical body. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a God that heals us of all our sicknesses and all our disease. We have to take doubt captive and cast it out. There's a reason there's an exit sign here. No, you ain't getting in. I'm sorry. I done dealt with you doubt. You staying out. (laughs) I done dealt with you doubt. You staying out. I'm not even going to crack the door to doubt. I know what the Word says. I'm settled in the Word, devil. You ain't going to trick me in my mind. The Word says, by His stripes I am healed. I'm going to stand on the Word. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Listen, only you can control the thoughts that come into your mind. You and I have the responsibility when a thought comes in our mind and we know it's contrary to the Word of God, we have to cast it out. We have to eject it. If I can use this terminology, we have to evict it. Because it's trespassing. Amen. The Word of God says that you and I have the mind of Christ. That's what the Word says. I think in some ways what that reflects is we have to guard. As a matter of fact, there are scriptures that talk about guarding your heart. And that term guard and that original Hebrew word for that, that, that word guard literally means to umpire. Is it a strike? Is it a foul? It means to umpire the thoughts that come up in our heart. And see, before lust ever manifests itself comes a thought. It may come through an image. Make you come through something you see through your eye gate. But it's going to enter into your thought realm. It's got to go through your thought realm before it ever gets in your spirit, man. Come on, somebody. It's got to go through your soul. Everything external has to come through your mind and through your soul. But if I make a decision, I'm going to keep the door locked. That when that thought comes, it's not going to have liberty to come up in my mind. But see, sometimes what will happen is thoughts allowed to stay, the enemy will bring another thought. And then what you have is strongholds built. And when there's a stronghold in your mind, sometimes it will not be removed just by one prayer or, or one standing in faith, I resist that thought. Sometimes you've got to continually resist that thought. See, when I got born again, my spirit was reborn, but for 22 years I had been taught how the, by the world and the flesh how to think and how to live life. And when I was born again, there was a change on the inside. And there were some things that were ejected out of my life automatically. But there were other things that I had to renew my mind to. Or renovate my mind from. 
And sometimes that's a process. When the enemy would bring a thought, I'd say, this is how you do it. Satan, I take that thought captive, I send it back to hell where it came from in Jesus' name. Watch this. When I first started walking with God, because I had these strongholds in my mind, not my spirit, my spirit was reborn, but my, our mind has to be renewed, right? I was having this battle in my mind, didn't understand. I was born again and the devil put suicidal thoughts. I remember working up on the edge of a building, we were putting some wall plates on or something, and I remember this thought coming to me, jump off. I said, I bind the devil in Jesus. I send that, shoom. I send that right back down to hell where it came from in Jesus' name. You have to take those thoughts captive. But when you allow them to stay, the, the Bible says this, that lust, when it's conceived, brings forth sin. Lust, when it's conceived. Lust, when it's, con oh, y'all ain't helping me. Lust, when it's conceived, brings forth sin. Sin, when it's conceived, brings forth death. And see, if I allow lust to stay, thoughts of lust stay in my mind. You think, oh, it's just a little old picture, it's just a little old thought I'm dealing with. But you done cracked the door. We done seen what would happen. If you crack the door on one, he'll bring some friends with him. And see, we allow these strongholds to be built. And so sometimes it takes a period of time of resisting those thought patterns. Sometimes it's not automatic, I resist this thought, and, and it's gone. Sometimes there are strongholds that have been built, and that thought comes, maybe a thought of doubt, a thought of fear, a thought of whatever that's contrary to the Word of God, and when it comes into your mind, you may resist it. I resist that thought, cast it down in Jesus' name, and it may come back again. And sometimes there's a wrestling before that stronghold is broken. And what the enemy will try to tell you when you resist that thought, and it comes right back, he'll say, that ain't working. But you just keep on confessing. You say, I cast that thought down. It loses a little bit of effect. And it comes back again. I cast that thought down. It loses a little bit more effect. And you keep resisting it. Sooner or later, that stronghold is going to be broken down. And see, when these strongholds get broken, sometimes you've got to wrestle. But you've got to realize that in the name of Jesus, it's exiting your life. Sometimes you've got to wrestle with it. And sometimes you just got to drag it out. Bless God, in the name of Jesus. I might have to write, you coming up out my mind, stronghold, lust, these thoughts are coming out in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet if you believe it. Hallelujah. We're going to walk in victory. We're going to walk in victory. We're going to walk in victory over our mind, over our thoughts. In the name of Jesus, we're going to walk in victory. The Bible says God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Excuse me, I forgot to shut the door. Give somebody a high five and tell them, keep your door shut. Keep the door shut. Guys, you got to hear this. Because all it takes is a little crack, man. All it takes is a little crack. All it takes is a little crack. You know, I was praying this week, and I'll conclude this. I was praying this week. And the Lord just brought up Denise to me. And I mean, I pray for my wife on a daily basis. She prays for me. Just brought Denise up. And I just began to thank the Lord for her. This woman going to guard me. I know I, ain't, I know I ain't all that in a bag of chips, but I'm going to tell you, this woman going to guard me. And used to be, it would irritate me. If you're a female, if you can't meet with me and her, you ain't meet with me. Well, I need pastor. No, you need pastor and his wife. There's one of the, that's one of the reasons we've been married 33 years. God has set her in my life. And I, I would hope to think that there's some things in me that help her a little bit. But I know, and the Lord just really brought that. I'm so appreciative to you, honey. Yeah, I know you're looking at it. It aggravates me sometimes. <laughs> wow. But guys, if there's ever been a time in a generation that we have to guard our thoughts, it's right now. There's some of us, I want you to just bow your head. I, I just sense this in the Holy Spirit. There's some of us here this morning. And if you were to really be honest, guys, you got some strongholds in your mind. You got some strongholds in your thought processes. 
You think about stuff that you shouldn't be thinking about. You allow yourself to go places mentally that you shouldn't go. Whether it be doubt, whether it be fear, whether it be worrying all the time, anxiety, depression, all that stuff. All that stuff's rooted in your thought life. It really, well, you know, there's some different uh, chemicals that are out of balance and stuff. And I, I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not denoting, I'm not playing off on that. But I really believe everything that manifests naturally is rooted spiritually. I believe it has a spiritual root to it. And oftentimes it's thought processes. Maybe you've allowed doubt and unbelief to get in your mind on something you've been believing God for. It's clear in the Word. And you've allowed doubt to come in. There's a stronghold there. I believe by the Holy Spirit, just like I dragged little David out that door. I believe God wants to pull those strongholds down in your mind. I believe God wants to give you victory. But listen, it's not going to come through an anointed hand being laid on your head. It's not going to, listen, we're going to anoint you with a gallon of oil. Some of these, and I believe in deliverance. I believe that salvation, I believe God, that God can fill people with the Holy Ghost. Of course, I believe in all of that. I believe all that comes sometimes, oftentimes through the laying of my hands. And I believe deliverance can come. But there's one thing to be delivered. There's one thing to be healed. There's another thing to walk in your deliverance and walk in your healing. And in order to walk out your healing or walk out your deliverance, you got to know this stuff about the mind. Come on, somebody. There are people that have come to this altar and we laid hands on them by the Word of God and I know they were delivered. And they walked out and opened the door to doubt, opened the door to bondage or whatever in their mind and found themselves right back in the mess that they came out of. And it wasn't because God didn't work or the prayer didn't work. It's because they didn't take authority over their thought processes and tear down strongholds and imaginations and replace it with the Word of God. But you hear this morning, I believe God wants to bring a release. Right now, heads bowed all over this building. You say, Pastor, that's me. I want you to just lift your hand up, put it back down. The Holy Spirit will see. Holy, yes, God sees all these hands on, all throughout this building. I want everybody here, I want you to pray this prayer with me this morning. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that gives me the ability to walk in victory over my thoughts. So right now, I come against any strongholds that are in my mind that are contrary to the Word of God. And I rebuke them in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, guard every thought, every imagination that I dwell on. Anything that does not line up with the Word of God. I will take it captive. I will take it captive. And I will cast it out. I have victory. I have the mind of Christ. I am more than a conqueror. I'm shutting the door on every thought that's contrary to the Word of God. I receive deliverance. Strongholds are broken this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Give God a praise. Come on. Give Him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.